Hey, ladies, welcome to Manifest. Welcome, 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 welcome. Happy Friday. Yay. How y'all doing? Okay, so look, different surroundings, different place. Okay. But last week, I just want to kind of set you up. Last week, we was talking about the encounter, and we're still unpacking the encounter, right? My life change. Still processing, y'all. So still working through so many layers of the encounter. And it only makes sense that the encounter by itself is very layered. As we grow on with the Lord, we discover, right? And I'm sure many of you have discovered that you are like going in deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, discovering who God is and what he desires of you. So with that, before I go any further, we're going to pray. We're going to set the atmosphere, okay? So let's go before our Father in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that there is no one like you. God, you are amazing. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you, Lord God, for being with us and calling us and saying that you'll never leave us nor forsake us and reminding of reminding of us that thing daily. Thank you for being so dear and near to all of us, God. We can't do anything without you. So, Lord God, we say, have your way, Lord God. Have your way today in our lives. Have your way through this message. Illuminate our minds, Holy Spirit. Shine your revelatory light. Let us see what we need to see. Let us pull off what we need to pull off. We open ourselves up to all of you and we say none of us. So have your way. Breathe on us, God, as we go into this time of manifest, God. I lift up everybody under the sound of my voice, God. I declare and decree that they're covered in the blood of Jesus. I come against assignments and devices that the fashion formed against their weakness. We shut them down right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I declare a hedge of protection around their children and their children's children, like Lord God, a wall of fire in the name of Jesus. So I thank you, Lord God, for divine protection. We thank you, Lord God. We call forth supernatural well-being. Anybody dealing with sickness and disease in their bodies or their loved ones' bodies, we come against it right now. We take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And I declare healing. I declare wholeness from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for individuals just rising up right now under the sound of my voice off that sick bed. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord God, that you begin to deal with individuals in the hospital rooms. God, thank you, God, for showing your power, your miraculous power in the name of Jesus. Dealing with eye conditions, glaucoma, Lord God, I declare and decree that the cloudiness in the eyes clear up right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, right now I deal and speak to heart palpitations, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that the rhythm of the heart begins to beat rhythmically the way you ordain and create created that heart to be in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, come against Lord God, wrong, Lord God, wrong blood count, low blood count, white, low blood count. I declare and decree it becomes stabilized right now in the name of Jesus. We receive the healing power of God right now, God. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, for your power. Thank you, Lord God, for miracles, signs, and wonders happening right now. Right now, we release our faith to receive that. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. My God, what just happened? What just happened? I just don't know what just happened. All right, my goodness, what just happened? That just took me by surprise. Listen, believe God for his power, for his healing, to flow in your life. We are in our moment, our time as the church. This is the church's greatest hour. Believe God for healing. Believe God for deliverance within your soul, within your children's soul, okay, in their lives. We call forth the healing power of God right now, right now to break forth. Come on now. Somebody say, I receive it. Put it in a comment box. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Listen, this is going to be a good one. So right now, take time. I need you to like. Okay, like right now. Take time to like. Hit that like button. You know, we're kind of slow coming around. 
in doing this. I don't know why, but we just need to get on board. Get on board because this is just where we are, okay? This is where we are, okay? Don't lag behind the move and what's happening, you know, the season we're in. So we have to kind of utilize and use what we have in the form of technology, okay? So like and subscribe. And I need you to share, tag somebody right now about this uh, manifest session. We're going to unpack the encounter. We're going to talk about how it all started, when it all began. Where was I? We're going we're gonna to look into that. So share, 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 like, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And also, come on, put it in the comment box where you are joining us from, okay? And let's connect, let's engage. Let's just connect with each other by engaging with each other. This is going to be a good time. Amen. Well, let's prepare to receive our offering. And I thank God for all of you. Y'all are amazing. Okay. Y'all are. Y'all rock. Y'all are amazing. You are so faithful. And we appreciate your faithfulness. You partner with us. You help us do what we do here at Right Direction Church International. And there's ways to give. You can go to rdci.info forward slash give. Or you can text RDCI to 844-624-1200, okay? Or you can mail it in to our PO Box, 21672, Columbia, South Carolina, 29221. Or you can drop it off, okay? 1234 St. Andrews Road Island at our administrative offices. And I just want to thank God again. As I always tell y'all, y'all rock. Y'all women of great substance. We have, there's so many things as a church we are doing, have continue to do through building, through a pandemic. And that's because we have faithful supporters, partners like yourself. So pat yourself on the back, clap, clap, clap for yourself. We're getting the job done. We're getting the job done here in the city and at different locations. We're allowing God to be we allow God to use us. We are his hands, okay? And as we give, we are able and empowered to be a good set of hands. We give to our communities. Um, we back to school bash, which was amazing, y'all. We can do it up some more next year. You know, we have so many things we do. We give away food during the holidays. And of course, our, our um, monthly fruit and veggie giveaway. Y'all, listen, we gotta keep, we gotta do what we can do. Groceries, okay, they're going up. It's crazy. It's so expensive to buy groceries. And one of the first things are to, that go when you look at your budget is that fresh fruit and vegetables because it's so expensive. So let's do our part, continue to do our part. And I thank God for you. And we declare and decree as you give and support Right Direction Church International with your finances that you continue to see God make all grace abound towards you that you have all sufficiency in all things and you you are able, you are able, empowered to give to every good work. And I declare that God makes all grace, favor, and all favor and earthly blessing abound towards you in abundance. Glory to God. So I thank you, Lord God, for those who are parting, those who are returning their tithe. That's $1 on every $10, $10 on every $100. Praise God, $100 on every $1,000 who are tied there. And those who are allowing you to speak to their heart right now to give. And I thank you. I thank you for supporting what we do here in um, the church, Right to Rest Church International. As you give, on, if you could do me a favor, okay, on the comment box, if you could put manifest so we can kind of earmark it, it'd be helpful. If you can't do it, it's okay. It's not a big deal but it's helpful. So I thank God for all of you today. May the blessing of God increase abide on you more and more and more and more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your giving. Okay, y'all. Okay, so, all right. So last week we were talking about unpacking and going into the encounter. And so I said, but let me back it up a little bit. Let me back it up a little bit and let's kind of go to where it all started. It kind of, I kind of, I did an interview with Karen and she asked me when it started. And I, I said 2015 and that's when God began to, he spoke to me about the encounter. Okay. He spoke to me about the encounter because we named our conference that one year, the encounter. And after we came out of it and 
we experienced God encountering us in 2015 very intimately and deeply. And we knew we could not just allow that to be a one time moment, one time during that conference. And so what we did that year is like we said, we go, you know what, let's call this conference the encounter. And we're not gonna do, we're not gonna do a luncheon, we're not gonna do a fashion show. We're not going to do a dance because we have all these bells and whistles, right? We was doing so much. And we said, let's, let's, let's just back it all up, okay? And let's connect and let's look at, you know, you know ourselves, our, ourselves, our schedule, and get before God. And that was the beginning. But the first encounter, y'all, after I had that interview, after, you know, I started thinking about that first encounter was in 2017, 2017. So, you know, we set our hearts to do that and we were preparing to do it. And it was, it was just, we was all like wide open with, we were so excited. And then on August 6th, right, my mom transitioned, right? My mother transitioned. So I went to New Jersey and I was there for two weeks, you know, you know, just trying to just kind of finalize things and prepare her, for her funeral and just it was, it was just so much stuff and of course the grief and it was just it was okay anybody had a parent that transitioned you understand what I'm talking about right and so the thing was it's like I got this huge meeting you know and preparing the table to be spread to intimately encounter God and to encourage women encourage people you know, to seek his face and, you know, and do it in that, that time to encourage all of that when I was in such intense grief. So I was like, wow, I cannot allow, I can't move forward without going backwards. Okay. Because it was at that moment, at that moment of my deepest sorrow, my darkest moment in my soul. It was, I mean, my heart, I felt, i never forget this. I was in my sister's house and my husband was sitting in the chair. I was sitting like, like next to him on the couch. And I just like began to cry, just cry. And I was clutching my heart. I was like, it hurts, it hurts. I literally felt pain in my heart. Woo! I never felt that before. I mean, I just literally felt my heart being gripped. And I was like, Whoa, this is so hard. And Pastor Mary, she was one of our speakers, you know, and she said, you know what, Marsha, I got you. Do you need me to do your night? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to just wait, just wait. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see myself. I couldn't find myself to even come through to share you know, it's like, how, I was like, where am I? And I'll never forget. I'll just never forget. You know, at that moment, the Lord began to deal with me. He took me back to, so interesting. My husband had a birthday cake and y'all today's his birthday. Okay. Well, yesterday was his birthday, <laughs> you know? And so, and so the Starship Enterprise, somebody put the, that on his cake, right? And I, you know, I was a Trekkie back in the day. And so had that on, you know, I, the Lord began to show me a portal, right? And he'd show me like a transporter. And, and it, there was times when they, um, the Star Trek crew would get on there and they had, a, had to be in a particular space for them to be transported back up to the sh ship at a particular time. If they got there late, they wouldn't transport. And the Lord began to show me there's a window. There was a window of opportunity for me to, to, to come away from this grief, not allow it to suck me in, to fight, you know, to wrestle with my hurt, to wrestle with that pain. Because he said, if I did not do it, I would need rescue. I would, God said, I'm going to have to send people in to get you. So I need you to trust me, Marcia, and I need you to jump into the space of the encounter and not allow the pain of your mom transition to cause you to sit 
by the sidelines, he said, it's not going to get any better. You're going to have to fight. That was so profound for me. And that's when I began to wrestle. And that's when I began to fight for what God had for, the, had for me at that moment, to encounter him, to experience the Lord in my darkest moment, in my darkest season. Sometimes we look for things to get better before we um, seek God's face, before you cry out to him. God, I need you. God, I need to know you. God, I need to hear your voice. And so at that point in my 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 nephew's twin bed. Okay. You know, I would lay there at night and cry out to God, God, I need you. Help me. Help me not to be overwhelmed by my grief. Help me not to allow it to color everything I see. I need to see you through this dark time. I need to see you through this heaviness. I need to see you through this moment where I feel like I'm being crushed. And the Lord began to strengthen me and help me to encounter him during one of my darkest times. So this message, this message is from that. It's from that first encounter. When I don't even know how I even made it from the seat to the podium, but God helped me. And I know I had a message prepared, but I don't think I even preached that message. I think I just kind of spoke from where I was and how I encountered him and what God desires from us. That he's just not the God of the good times and the, and the great moments, but he's the God of your darkest moments. And in those darkest moments, we got to be like Jacob who was at the Ford Jabbok. We talked about that before. He wrestled. He was there by himself all alone. It was about midnight and he wrestled. And that's why I hope you your takeaway from this message today is that you wrestle. You wrestle with anything that's trying to overwhelm you, take you out, take you down, discourage you, to distract you, to tell you you're not good enough or you're not qualified or whatever it may be. Wrestle. Do you hear me? Wrestle. Wrestle. Okay, stay tuned for this message. Thank you for joining us today. Let it be the last day with those who are under the sound of my voice. Talk about somebody's stuff, their dilemma, their hiccups, their slips. And you hear, you go and make your way to your sister and you love on her. Come on, and, and you let her know, girl, I am this, it's okay. God loves you. I love you. And you know, I'm no judgment here. I'm not going to judge you. And I'm not going to talk about you. But I'm going to cover you with my love. And I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to help you get back on your feet. And I'm going to be there for you when you think you can't make it through. Even though I know about your stuff, I got you. God loves you and he wants to use you and you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Let's stop talking about each other and let's start loving each other. Amen. Amen. Because the church is a hospital, y'all. Sick people come through. Amen. Injured people come through. Don't, do y'all see my wound? I'm injured. But God is good. Amen. So what did I do? I run to the house of God. I was in New Jersey and preparing the, you know, the, the final service for my mother. When Sunday rolled around, I said, I got to go to church. I got to get into the house, right, baby? I got to go to church. Even though I was up late at night, up early in the morning, trying to find a dress, trying to do this, dealing with that, dealing with this, dealing with all kinds of stuff. I said, Sunday came, I, I, got, I, went, to, I went to the Sea Rights Church. I'm like, I'm coming to church. I need to get a word. I need to get in worship. Because if I don't, I'm going to lose my mind. If I don't go to church, I'm going to lose my mind. There's a window of deliverance where you are hit with craziness. And you got to run in there and go. I don't care what you look like. 
Because I knew if I didn't run through that window, I was getting ready to be on the wrong side of grief. I was getting ready to get stuck. I was getting ready to run from Jersey and never come back again. I said, if I don't get the word and get my mind right, I'm going to bleed over everybody, not talk to nobody, don't want to do the will of God because I've been serving him and not in Jersey. And I'm upset because I couldn't see my mama all the time and because I was serving you and you, you allowed this to happen right before the encounter. No, I got to run into the house of God because you're such a good God. If I didn't give my soul a new song, a new word for my narrative that was going on in my head, I would be one messed up chick right now. Can't give God praise because Satan writes a song. He writes a story. He gives you a narrative, but God got one for you at the same time. You got to go into the house of the Lord and encounter him. I had to encounter God before I had the encounter. Yeah, I'm hurt. Yeah, I cry sometimes unexpectedly. But those are my tears for my mama. I don't have a shame, no shame about that. But what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, What I'm going to do is make that devil mad that he, he got, if he got in any of this timing, he better wish he never came on the sixth. He better wish he, I never got that phone call after church. He better wish he never, ever, 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 ever touched my mama's mind with Alzheimer. I'm making a mission that I'm going to pray for people all the more. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to praise. I'm going to get in my word because I'm going to make it count. And that's what you do. That's what you do. And your peace of the world, the way of peace, whatever God gives you, you make it count. You messing with my marriage, devil? All right. I'm going to pray for somebody else's marriage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in the word and get all the marriage scripture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make you wish you never mess with my marriage. What? You going to touch my child? You going to touch the seed of my womb? Oh, I'm going to serve in children's ministry. I'm going to pray for children. I'm going to babysit. I'm going to do whatever I can because you should not have ever mess with my you're not gonna make me bitter you're not gonna make me resentful you're not gonna make me angry I will put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness I'm gonna dance I'm gonna leap I'm gonna run I'm gonna make you confuse Satan I thought she's depressed wasn't she crying five minutes ago? Now she running around the church. Wasn't she in bed a little while ago? Now she giving God praise. Oh, wasn't she confused a little while ago? Can't put her thoughts together. How she's getting in the scripture. How she's declaring the word. We don't know what's going on because we're hitting her with everything we got. And she keeps coming stronger. She keeps coming back. And not just that, she's multiplying. She's bringing women with her. She's bringing people who are toting the word of God, declaring and decreeing. I think we don't mess with the sleeping giant. I think we don't woke up our worst enemy. I think we don't mess with somebody we don't want to deal with. We should have left her alone. We should have left her in Newark. We should have left her in New Jersey. We should have left her in Orangeburg. So we should have left her in Florida. Oh, devils, we don't know what to do we got to run up out of here because they are too much for us we can't handle them we don't have what it takes they know who they are we drove them to the word we drove them prostrate we drove them to prayer they know their weapons they had an encounter their lives have changed we can't handle what we woke up It's getting ready to be on and popping. There's souls out there to get saved. People to be delivered. Hospitals to be visited. We're going to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We're going to pray for people until they get delivered. We're going to pull them out of the clubs. We're going to pull them off the streets. We're going to love them with the love of God. We're going to pray for them. We're going to encourage them. 
and we're gonna make Satan scratch his head. Come on, we are army in these last days. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's what something you need to do. You know he done hit you with some stuff. Oh, that's right, you thought you were going to get me down? You thought you were going to break me? You thought you were going to make me lose my mind? You thought you were going to have me stuck home in my bed, eating ice cream, not putting makeup on, not doing my hair? You thought you were going to have me in a sunken place? Oh, devil, you are already in a sunken place. Why would I join you? I'm the redeemed. I'm saved. My name is written in the book of life. I don't have time to go into the sunken place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ladies, you will go through stuff because that's what life is all about. I will never tell you it won't hurt. I will never tell you it won't shed any tears. I will never tell you it might lose some stuff, but guess what? He will be God in your life. He will help you. He'll, you'll, you'll grow and you'll discover who he is. Man, I began to go before the Lord. He said, he said Marsha, I can't give you what you want. I can't give you your mom back. I can't give you what you want, but I can give you what you need. And we got to make a decision. We may want something, but God has something that you need. And so I said, okay. Okay, God, I trust you. I yield to you so you can give me what I need because I can't get what I want. And some of us got to settle it. I didn't plan to say all this, y'all. I, I, some of us got to settle. You won't get what you want. But guess what? You'll get what you need. And what you need will help you with how to handle about how, about, uh, regarding what, not getting what you wanted. His grace. His grace. He said, Marsha, I'm giving you grace to go through your life. When everything comes at you, I, grace is here. I will, I, will, so I, will, I will let you discover me. and I, I, I'll, get, I'll show you another dimension of me. I reveal an, my character to you. I begin to allow you to experience me as your lover of your soul. There's times you go through valleys, but in the valleys, I am with you. Come on, baby. Walk through this valley. I know you try to run out the valley, but come on. You got to go through it. So women of God, yes, things will happen, but you have what it takes. You're in the army and you, they don't take a hit. It will lodge in a place possibly unexpected, but God says, I got a bomb. I got a bomb for the wound you just took. And that's the bomb of Gilead. He said, I allow me to put the bomb on your wound and, and I will just love on you and, and I will heal you and I'll even talk to you about the wound. Come on, come, come, let us reason together. We think about that scripture when we're looking to, to get something from God, but God said, let's reason. Yeah, I got some reasons. I want you to talk to me. Talk to me about what's on your heart. Talk to me about what you're feeling. Come on now, reason and declare so you can be justified. Put me in remembrance of my word and sometimes that word is just getting yourself out of the bed all of you the joy of the Lord is my strength come on now what's money good for if you can't get out of bed come on what's money good for if you're depressed the joy of the Lord is my strength reason with the Lord begin to talk to the Lord and he will help you he's gonna help us but when you go through that place and come out of that dark place there's a light that's so bright and he'll begin to magnify the way before you and he'll begin to show you stuff that you didn't even know man that's what my life is going to be like that's what it exists and he'll begin to reveal things to you but you got to go through the dark season 
And I don't know who's battling with darkness in your life. But Jesus is the light of the world. He said, you received me into your heart. Let my light, come on, hit, come, come out the brokenness of your heart. Let it beam forth. Let it come forth. But you got to embrace me in this dark place. Don't run from me. Don't push me away. Embrace me in your darkness. Embrace me in your sadness. Embrace me in your brokenness. And don't be ashamed of your brokenness. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Shame on anybody that shames somebody for tears. Come on now. The one let me tell you something scientific about tears. We've been talking about this in women's Bible studies for some time. Scientists have discovered that in tears there's healing properties. Isn't God so awesome that he allow us, given us, especially us women, to cry so that we can even heal our own self. That you have the power to start your healing, start your breakthrough, start your deliverance by allowing tears to flow. You say, well, I've been crying, but I'm not feeling like I'm not making any movement, any change. But when you allow those tears to come out your, out your eyes from your heart, God, and saying, God, I love you even though I'm hurt. God, you're awesome even though I'm broken. God, I'll never go back. That's what happens. Your tears become activated to heal versus to pull you into a dark place. Even though you're crying, you don't understand, you don't confu you're confused. Guess what? You can still be confused and still love God. You can still be hurt and still say, I'm going to serve you. So you don't have to say, oh, God. I must not be loving you because I'm feeling this way. No, God, there's beauty in my brokenness. So, God, I'm broken, and I know because I'm still going to be focused on you, loving on you, and say, God, it's for you I live, and for you I move, and for you I die. I'm not going back. Even though it don't look like I'm going nowhere, I'm not going back. And you allow those tears to flow, and healing begins. Man, many a night while in New Jersey, I cried every night, every night on my knees, though. On my knees in my nephew's bedroom, I was crying, but I was praising him. I was crying, but I was worshiping him. And I couldn't do it so loud because they weren't really believers in that house, you know. But I was giving him praise in, in my quiet, loud voice. I didn't know I could be loud and quiet at the same time. But breakthrough came in my quiet, loud voice. I'm going to challenge you ladies get free get free from whatever's been holding you down keeping you back keeping you stuck man there's stuff that should have happened could have happened didn't happen stuff I didn't like but I can't stay stuck there's always some story to read that pull you back but I have to say I got to close this book I can't read this story anymore because this story does not bring me any peace it does not bring me any closure it will not be rewritten I can't change the ending so what do I do when you don't like a book when you pick a book out the library and you started it and say I don't like this book or you're watching a movie I don't like this movie you change the channel you close the book we gotta make a decision I'm not gonna read this book no more and I'm not gonna watch this show anymore and if anybody wants to come and try to help me watch this show oh I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it I can't get stuck I can't rehearse this thing we have to get free so I said oh God I'm closing the book. I'm not watching this movie, so you got to give me something else. So what does that happen? You start waiting on God. And there's a promise on those who wait. He will strengthen your heart. Those who wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. So I'm waiting, God. So God, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Will you give me something else to read? Give me something else to read. I don't want to read this. I know you told me to close it, but there's nothing before me, God. Give me something else. Give me something else. Give me something else. So what did I do? I start crying out before the Lord. His ears are open to the cries of the righteous and his eyes are on you. So I began to say, I'm not getting anything right now. Another book. I'm not getting anything to look at. But I know you hear me because your word says so. So what you do, you start settling on your knees in your broken place. Okay, what does the word say? What does the word say? Okay, the the word says this. That's why you got to come to church in good season and bad season. That's why you got to come to Bible study because there will be a time you're going to say, 
say? What does the word say? What does the word say? Hey, you got to get in your word. Spend time with God because there will be a time when you say, what does the word say? What does the word say? I had nobody at that moment to give me the word. You go through stuff by yourself and it's designed by God. Don't get mad at people. They're not there 24 seven because God says nobody will be God but me. You're getting a place that you got to call on me. You can't call on your husband. You can't call on your children. You can't call on your mentors. You can't call on your spiritual people in your life. Call on me, Marsha. Call on me, Marsha. What God? I called on you for over 20 something years. I called on you for over 30 something years. You're going to make me call on you now. I called on you for the church building. I called on you for the saints of God. I called on you for other people's children. I called on you for other people's marriages. I called on you. Don't you say my prayers ever living before you. Why I got to call on you now. A new situation. A new time. A new moment before you. You have not been here before. It's a new place for you, Marsha. So call on me. Call on me. Until you hear my voice. You got to hit the floor. You can't wait for somebody to pray for you. You can't call somebody up. Everybody got to go to their Jabbok. The place of surrender. A place of isolation. A place by yourself. And you begin to wrestle with your soul. You begin to grapple with those things that kept you up. Kept you bound. And that's what I did. I wrestled with myself. Trying to get a hold of myself. Trying to throw me to the ground. And God said, that's how you get yourself out of here. So I began to say, okay, God, give me a word. He'll give you a word. He'll give you a word. We can't get mad at anybody. I had the best support. Y'all were calling, praying, DM. Guess what? It still ain't never enough. People could do everything in the world. It's not God say, so you see, they ain't enough. They ain't enough. They ain't enough. They ain't enough. You got to realize me. I am God. And I will not allow anybody else to be God. I am a jealous God. Begin to call on me until I come to you. And so I said, now you got to wait on me, Marsha. You wait on me just like you told everybody else to wait. This time, you got to read your own story. Read your own declarations. Read your own things you gave to other people. I said, I got to take my own advice. All of us want to be ministers of the gospel. Oh, prophetic people. Got a word from the Lord for you. You will hit a place that you got to give your own word back to yourself. Until you can receive your own word, be blessed by your own word, be helped by your own word, you have not encountered God. So you want to be this place? You want to be what God called you? God said you got to call on me. Call on me. Man, I'm not playing. So here I was in a twin bed seeking God, looking at all that juvenile stuff in the room. And God began to say, Isn't that something? It's juvenile, right? It's juvenile. I'm glad you're seeing this. God instructed me, so I want you to stay here. Don't go in, don't go to the hotel, even though there's a room. Stay here. Be there for your sister. Serve. I was a hospitality person. I'm washing dishes, doing stuff. I said, dang, and my mama too. Can I get it to the guys to shut your mouth? Shut your mouth. Oh, you're going to serve yourself right on out of here. Serve. You know, there's sometimes your medicine, your healing is not what you expect. So I began serving. See, the thing is, the trick of the devil, he wants you mad. He wants you pouting. He wants you with an attitude so he can get you stuck. He said, but I'm going to have you work Christianity one or one. I'm taking you back to the basics of agape, hospitality, servanthood, blessing them who curse you, who speak evil against you, loving on them, shutting your mouth, swallowing your pride, humbling yourself and saying, all right. And God said, this is how you're going to get yourself healed so you can go back to South Carolina and do what I've called you to do. No, where's 
Where's, where's the hands that's going to be laid on me, God? Where's the prophetic word, God? Where's the, where's the clouds opening up? Where's the thunder opening up? Where's the word? He said, the word is serve. The word is agape. The word is hospitality. The word is get your hips back in church and go up in there and be what I've called you to be. And when you do that, you get yourself, you walk through your healing, through your serving. And he said, you got to be all right. You love me, right? You, you said, I'm the Lord God Almighty. Yes, you are, God. You said, you submit yourself to me. Yes, I do. You said, you humble yourself. Yes, I do. So you stand if you got to cry. You stand there and handle your tears and be okay with your tears because you said you yielded, right? You surrendered, right? You submitted, right? You decreased, right? So you, I can increase. You Sometimes you don't understand and may not realize what way you're going to take to get to a place of brokenness so that he can use you in a way that he wants to use you. You can never choose your test. You can never choose your process. You can never choose, but God will get in it and God will use it. So I looked at the stars and the ceiling and the light glow. I'm like, he said, yes, it's juvenile because if you don't get yourself in your right mind, you'll be a juvenile before me. I called you to be a woman of God, not a juvenile. So you wrestle with the face of being a juvenile. You wrestle with that thing. It's at the end of the day. Back on my knees. Not sleeping. Why? Because I got here. Where's the word? No. Get up and do what I told you to. Okay. When you want to leave, what you need? Okay. What you need? Okay. Oh, what? No, you sit down. I got you. Okay, God. Okay, God. And all the while, grace being imparted. People say, you're so strong. No, I'm not. I'm weak. So he can be strong. And so in, in your valleys of your life, he'll begin to handle stuff. And so you're going to use this tool? But why God? Why this one? Because I'm God. Okay, but give me something else to see. No, no. No new narrative just yet until you're okay with waiting on me. So what do I do? I'm going to wait on you, God. I'm here. I'm going to be here. I made my mind up. I'm going to be here. Have you made your mind up? You're going to be here. I'm going to be here. Oh, God, this hurts. Come on. Where is the Russian mighty wind? that I felt for somebody else, God. Where's my wind? <sighs> oh, where's the, the, all of a sudden, the, the thrust up with a spontaneous, euphoric experience of praise that I, I experienced when I'd gone to somebody else's house. You know, and we're praying them through, right? Pastor Nina prayed. And, Man, God just like, man, everybody's like, oh, God, thank you so much for coming and praying for me. I feel so good. Where's mine, God? There's some of us, because of what's on our lives, because what God has called us to, we'll never get it like somebody else got it. You'll never get a private treatment if you're a general. You can't be a general and want to be treated like a volunteer soldier. Wow. 
God says, as many of us has confessed ourselves right up into the big league. We declare and decree. We're pulling down the principality. Confess. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I'm power. God called me to the nations. So you're getting nation training. I'll wait on you, God. Where's my, where's my spectacular miracle? Where's my miracle? We get the testimonies. Oh, pastor, so-and-so. Oh, huh. Where's my miracle? Some of us who were believing God for miracles and didn't get the miracle because God would use miracles to flow through you. Sometimes people who are conduits for the miracle will walk away without their miracle. Where will you be? Will you still be waiting on him? So what's been happening? There's been a shifting and a dividing from the girls, from the women and the boys from the men. It's like God told Joshua, to said, consecrate yourself. Three days, I'm going to do this, I'm going to work wonders, I'm going to go through the camp. And he walked through the camp. They walked through the camp. Okay, you here, you there, you here, you there. God said, Marsha, if you act like a kid, Go ahead. If you act like you're a baby, if you act like you spoil you, you whine, I will never use you over there. Come on, well, how are you going to handle this? I'm walking through the camp. I'm putting a team together. I'm rallying my troops. How are you going to handle this load? Why I got all these rocks in my backpack, God? Why can't I, why can't I have her bag? Why I got this bag? Can I have that? No, didn't you say? Didn't I tell you? Stand up straight. So where are we going to be? How are we going to be? I believe we are on the brink. And I've been saying this for a while. And God says, I know, Marsha, you say you've been saying, but I need you to continue saying this. This, the earth is getting, it's being set for the coming of Jesus. But before he comes back, the church will be in a glorious state. Before he comes back, there'll be revival. There'll be signs and wonders like never before. So there's a revival that's getting ready to hit the earth, which is why so much is happening in our lives because you are sifting through stuff. You're wrestling with stuff. You're, you're confronting stuff. You're dealing with stuff. Because God says, I'm taking you through a process to see what team I'm going to put you on. And so God says time. Many of us, God says, it's time now to get off the milk. I'm putting a steak in front of you. So it's time for, come on, come on. Are you ready for this meat? You say you are because we make, we, we make, we make good noise. You know, we, we, kind of, we, kind of, we, we, we say make a lot of sound. We bad. We sound tough. Come on. We sound like we got it together. We are swata. Until the devil shows up. But we got to begin to handle this devil in this season. You may do it with tears coming down your face, but you're going to handle him. The tears don't mean you're weak. It just means you're hurt. But anybody that knows animals know the most dangerous thing is come up against somebody that's hurt. And so we'll just use this hurt for our good. Yeah. I'm hurt, but guess what? I'm going to release this pain right on the enemy's camp. So are you ready, ladies? You ready? There's beauty in your brokenness. It's okay. 
you believe in God for this and you still don't have your manifestation and you ashamed and you don't want to come to church because everybody know I was believing God for this for years and it hasn't happened. Don't flip the script, God. Don't flip the script. I'm be the first one. I'm going to keep serving. Even though I get a negative report. Y'all did not know that Minister Polite was dealing with what she was dealing with, did you? I tried to sit her down. She said, don't sit me down, Pastor Marshall. Don't sit me down. I got to serve my way out of this thing. I got to show up. Let me do whatever I can do. So I kept looking over my shoulder. You can't carry my stuff. I know what you're going through. She made her mind up. I'm going to serve God. If it's the last thing I do, what you're not going to say if I gave up on God, you're going to be shocked. If something happened because you cannot tell because I'm still showing up, I'm still praising God, I'm still lifting his name up, and you have no idea I'm fighting for my life. It doesn't say she wasn't in tears crying, but she kept showing up. She wasn't walking like she was, would like to walk, but she kept showing up. We get so caught up. I don't look good. I don't look together, you know, you know, I, you know, there's times like, you know, I was like, I need my hair done, but I ain't feel like going to the hair salon. I was like, I don't feel like it. I know I need to, but I just don't feel like it. So when you're dealing with stuff, you don't feel like, but I'm showing up. I said, I have a little afro, but I'm going to show up, okay? It's swelling right now as I speak. I just need to go in the bathroom right now and slap that creamy crack on the back of this thing here so I can lay it down, wash it back in the sink and say, okay, y'all, let's continue. <laughs> but I made my mind up. Have you made your mind up? When hell hits your life, can you still come through the doors? But check this out. You don't have to come through perfect. You don't have to come through perfect. And those of us who are ministers of, I'm so glad you're down right now. It's a difference when you know, it's a different type of hug. Oh, I'm so happy that you're broken because I can hug you now. I could feel better that I gave you a word. Shame, shame, shame on you. Don't do that. Let's get this thing right. Let's be authentic in our love. Let's be authentic in our care. Let's be authentic in our concern. It's too many women hurting. I was driving to church the other day, and you know, just during a, on a conference, I saw two young girls, and I'm like, what y'all get ready to do? I tried to slow down and catch up, and they looked and kept on going. I said, where are you? And so I'm just like, there's too many young ladies walking around with no clothes on, just around the church. We don't say we have to go too far. We go across the street. We could go behind the church. We just got to slow our lives down. I'm going to reach out to somebody. Hey, Connie, come on to church. What's going on? What you doing? Are you okay? What's your name? We got to begin to do those things. Every time Satan messes with your house, your life, you take somebody out of his camp. You take somebody out of his camp. So ladies, I did not get to my message. <laughs> but we got to we got to get busy. Before, you know, God knows about stuff before you even know about it. And you think because you know about it, you're going to stop it, right? Because you know what I care about. You know what I'm concerned. And he allows it to just roll on. 
I was looking over my journal, certain things I was writing, and when I was in that, we was on vacation, I was sharing my husband certain things. I was just, I was just in such a meditative place, and I was just sensing something, picking something up. Even that Sunday before I got the call, I was just like antsy. I couldn't sit down. I was so like, I kept getting up, and Lindsay like, man, what's going on? I think I got up by three or four times. I was restless, and then when I finally said, I'm not gonna get back up again, I'm gonna go over to the side. And I was over there, and the Lord said, I'm like, I was casting. He said, I got her now. I'm like, what? Oh, the devil is a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. What? Nobody got nobody now. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. You know, and so I'm here battling this stuff, and he's just preparing, was dealing with me and talking to me all along. And then I, then I get the call that Sunday, and I was like, oh, what in the world? You knew about this. You're talking to me about it. You're prepping me. You're preparing me, but you still allow it to go forth. He said, can I be God when I allow things to come into your life that you expected me to stop? So, okay, you're God. The theme and the thread of every prayer meeting, every song, a lot of songs we sang earlier, is surrender and yielding, and I say yes. That's what God is calling for us as women. We got to be surrendered. He wants us to yield. So some of us are here are dealing with stuff that's ugly. It's ugly. I don't like this. This is wrong. It's not fair. Can you say yes? Can you say yes if nothing changes? Can you still give God that yes? Because he'll use you. I believe there's a shift happening on planet Earth regarding women. And so God's trying to strengthen us and prepare us to stand in arenas. God's giving me to open a door for you. Okay. Wide door. And so he's going to stand in the arena. You're going to say, how did I get here? Who knew that in the valley of darkness, of despair, you were being prepared to stand? See, who knew the worst test that horrific trial, the painful issue was preparing you to stand before somebody in a position of greatness. No, I thought I would go through school. I thought I would go through a class. I thought I'd be able to say, can you mentor me? Can you show me how to be a superstar? God show me. No, you don't. That does not really prepare you. What prepares you All by yourself. Nobody there really praying you through, bringing you out, prophesying over you. It's like this, waiting on God and, and staying in a place of waiting on him and say, I'm going to trust you. So you have a calling. You have a purpose. God is laying a table before you. You see it in your mind's eye. God says, ah, yes, that's yours, but can you wait on me? Who are you? Make your way down. Well, y'all, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. So as you went through the mess, I know it just was a moment with you and the Lord, and I pray that this is the beginning of more moments. Okay, God has more for us, more for us, more for us. And so, y'all, I, I thought it would be great for this message to prepare for y'all because, like I said, yesterday was my husband's birthday, but today is my husband's birthday. So I wanted to prepare today for today. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in the city, as you know, I'm celebrating, and my husband is having a birthday. So I'm celebrating him. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the birthday wishes and the birthday love. Hit him up. Hit him up. Hit him up. Hit him up. If you have not yet, let him know. Celebrate my boo. Let him know how much he has changed your life. Amen. So, all right. Okay. For those of you who joined us after the offering, here's an opportunity to give right now. If this message has blessed you, empowered you, helped you, minister to you, go to rdci.info forward slash give, text RDCI to 844-624-1200, mailbox 
it in to one PO box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Or you can drop it off at an admin offices, 1234 St. Andrews Road. Okay, so let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those who are with us now or joining us later. I thank you, Lord God, this message is just speaking to them and that they choose to wrestle. They choose to wrestle. That they're going to fight through the darkness. They're going to push past what's trying to hold them back, keep them down. But they shake things off and they encounter you at a much deeper level. Holy Spirit, change their lives. Hallelujah. With your revelatory light, let them see God. Let them encounter God. Let them know God more intimately. Discover who he is, the depths, the heights, the width, the breadth of his love. Let them just come collide with the God. And I just thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you hear and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come on now, take this time. Make him your Lord and Savior. Bring him into your heart. Allow him to change your life. I don't know where I would be, my God, without Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And that simply is accepting him as God's son, believing that he died on the cross for your sins, shed his blood, and rose again. And now, it, now he is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's simply is what you, you know, understand who he, he is and that God sent him to reconcile you back to him. So you want to be a part of the family of God? Just come on in. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe you sent him to die on the cross and shed his blood for my sins. I confess I'm a sinner. I need Jesus as my savior. I receive him right now in my life. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God just like that. You're in the family of God. You're part of the crew. Go to rdci.info forward slash next steps and um, give us your information. We can thank God for you. Y'all, I got to get my nails done. Broken nail. All righty. All righty. All right. Listen, y'all, do me a favor. Let's have let's have some conversation. After this message, whatever the Lord is dealing with you about, go to Dr. Marsha Bailey Facebook page. I'm gonna start the conversation. I'm gonna put something out there and let's connect, let's engage. I wanna hear what the Lord is speaking to you and what he spoke to you through this message. Let's talk about it, okay? Let's talk about it. Listen, until then, see you later. Let's keep on manifesting the word of God. God's word will come to pass in your life. And we cannot live without the word of God. Amen. Have a great one. Love you.